Well, hello there, folks. Really do hope you're all well this Wednesday afternoon, which for me is day six of my Tenerife jaunt. Got a few bits and pieces to go through today, a few more than uh, yesterday. Um, got a few nuggets that I think are worth the dropping in there. Um, and then I'll uh, let you know what happened on my day five yesterday, and a good day it was. Um, I do hope you're well, as I say. I believe the weather has turned a little bit in Blighty now. It's still mad out here. Bit hot for me, but I'm willing to take one for the team, viewers, and I'll go out and, uh, you know, I'll do the best I can in it. I, f I feel I've got to. You haven't got any great heat back home. I feel I should get out there and sunbathe for one and all. And I'm going to. It won't last long. It never does with me. Right. Um, yeah, before we go any further, let uh, let me apologise again. If you notice, if, for the, the few of you that watched yesterday's Day 5 in Tenerife, I had to wipe it. I had to re-record it. I have... Spoken why, if you uh, catch the new one that came out a couple of hours ago, uh, day five, it tells you why we had some issues and uh, I had somebody that was really worried about some of its content. So I felt I should take it down and re-record and that is what I've done. So we're on the old two for one today. You've got that one that came out about an hour ago. You'll get this probably, I would imagine, the four to six o'clock mark. I would have thought. Anyway, what will we go with first? I'll tell you what we'll go with. We'll go to one of our channel favourites. I knock a lot of people on here, as you know. But I praise a few. An old Miriam. I like Miriam. She was on TV earlier today. I didn't manage... I never caught it all, but I caught a lot of it. They said, anyway, Miriam, how are you now? She said, well, I'm in my 80s, as you know. I find I'm, I'm uh, pissing and farting a lot. I tend to do a lot of pissing and farting. But other than that, I'm all right. Oh, I thought, well, that's a, a nice start to your interview, Miriam. Only you could say that. Probably only you could get away with that and say it. She did. The um, rest of the interview was pretty much okay as well, but it tapered off a little bit after that. I thought that was a really promising start. As I say, probably more because Miriam said it than anything else. I like that. What else have I noticed today? Yeah, is it the Stonegate pub group? Yeah, I think they run the Slug and Lettuce, amongst others. They've got, I think it's at six or 800 pubs throughout GB. News is out today. What they've decided to do in the busiest times of day, the, the peak periods... I think they're going to put 20 pence on all pints of beer. I thought, well, that's very nice of them, isn't it? At a time when Britain's absolutely on its knees, we're getting battered for energy, for fuel, for food. For some people, a nice uh, drink on a warm day is a bit of respite from all of that, you know, a bit of, well, I don't know, taking it easy and, and trying not to reflect how hard life is out there. At a time when we, we're trying to do that, they stick in the boot in because they're not making enough and they want to hit us even more. And that's what they're doing. Well, they might as well join the long queue because everybody's doing it, I suppose. But I thought to myself, well, I will make sure when I'm back home, they're the kind of pubs I will not be frequenting. I think it's well out of order. But maybe I'm in the minority. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Who are we going to look at next? Oh, wait a minute. There was one. Oh, yeah. Div is it Davina McCall? I think it's Davina McCall. She was on the TV today or in the press. I think it was in the press. Saying how much she's enjoying life, even at her age, it's fantastic. It's killing her, she said, to stay in shape. She's putting a lot of work into it, but she's getting the benefits and she feels great. Well, that's all well and good. She was pictured again with not much on. Her and old Amanda Holden, they love it, don't they? And I thought to myself, well, you might be all right, Davina, but I'm not sure about that. Well, is it an octopus or is it some kind of serpent? I don't know what it is. I notice we've got two tentacles coming out of the old Alan Wickers. They're coming just up under a, a level with a belly button. Two cracking tentacles there coming up. And I'm thinking, if it's an octopus, the other six are written elsewhere. And I thought, you might be okay, but that poor octopus, or serpent, whatever it may be, it's never seen the light of day. You've always got the old Alan Wickers on, or a pair of trousers. And I felt really sorry for it. Mind you, I thought to myself, it'll feel at home in there. It will probably feel it's in and around the sea. No, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said that. That's not that kind of channel. It's not that kind of channel, but... I just, I just felt awful for it. In all honesty, I thought, why does she need to show us it, really? That's that's really what I thought. But it's what they do, isn't it? It's what they do. It keeps them in the public eye. Where are we going to go next? I'm sorry if I've put the bins on, but I've had to. Wait, wait a minute, what are we going to do? Turkey, yes. As news gets to us that yet yeah, somebody else has died in Turkey whilst having the old surgery over there. She was having a butt lift. Having a butt lift, she was, Yes. And uh, um, I read 24 people from the UK since 2019, what, four years now, have died whilst under the knife for various procedures. Well, that's only six a year, I suppose, so maybe many out there are still willing to take a chance. I would suggest you probably wouldn't bother 
Is it really worth putting yourself in the line of possible death just to have your boat lifted up? Now, on that score, funnily enough, yesterday, went for a, a long walk. Well, tell a lie. Got a bus to somewhere, then had a long walk back to the old apartment. And whilst I'm waiting for the uh, Trouble and Strive, she's in Monsoon or somewhere like that. I don't go in them places because I... I'm just like a spare part, and I, I try to sit outside looking for some shade. There's this young girl passes me on one of them, their scooters, one of them electric uh, scooters. And she's going past, and she's got a, re- a fawn coloured. Well, I, I realised as she went past it was a thong. I thought, that's a skimpy bather. As she was coming up towards me, as she w- was going past me, I thought, it's a thong. It was a horrible fawn colour. It's not a colour like that. I don't know what it is, I just don't tend to like it. I couldn't see much of it from behind because I think it was doing as it was supposed to do. If it cost her 20 quid, a tenner of it was definitely up a crack. You couldn't see anything at all. She was a girl of only about 25, 26. She had a rather big behind. Like, particularly big, probably. About that size. That's only one cheek, by the way. And I thought to myself as she went past, I thought, I was feeling a bit warm, I was feeling a bit thirsty. I think I need an orange. That's what I thought of, and luckily there was... There was the old uh, fruit and veg shop just there, so I was looking up to be able to get one. Yeah, I've never seen as much orange peel in my life, and I thought to myself, lovey, you've either got to get that looked at, or maybe start wearing a proper bikini. The thong did not suit at all. It did nothing for her. Honestly, talk about orange peel. Oh, my God. Through every inch of her posterior, all I could see was orange peel. It was awful. I think when people put those on, have they not got a friend? Or I think she was with a boyfriend, and it? Would he not say to her, Oh, Deirdre, I'm not, uh, Beryl or whatever her name was, Beryl, I'm not sure about your bum in that. No, 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 love. I think you need a bikini. You need to get that covered up. Because with having the old, uh, the old thong bit going all the way up, the how's your father there anyway, people are going to be attracted to, to your bottom. And it does look a bit, he, did, he wouldn't have to use the word on his peel. It, it, I, I don't know how he'd say it in a nice way so as not to offend his girlfriend, but... I'm sure there must be some way of saying it. I mean, in all honesty, she'd have been better with a pair of pants on. But at least bikini. A little. It wasn't a nice look, viewers. It wasn't a nice look. She'd be one of them ladies in the next few years of going to Turkey to have a butt lift and she'd ask him to stretch it while she's there. But as I say, for all those look bad, I would still worry if I was a dad or a partner, you know. They, these Turks, they do lose a lot of patience, they do. Right, what else did I see? Steve Berry. He's been on the old um, TV saying they should be stopping making Top Gear after the serious accident that Andrew Flintoff has just had. And I only want to raise one comment, and I was gutted I never raised it. He said, oh, I, they've got all manner of people on there now. When I used to be on there, he said, it was a more professional on people that knew what they were doing, and they had proper drivers and stunt drivers. He said, but now they've got like a netto Peter K on there doing it. That's all Peter K means by me, Paddy. Oh, Paddy McGuinness, I thought. That's a Bobby Dazzle of a line. I thought, I wish I'd have thought of that one. A Neto Peter K. A cracking line. I loved it. So, he's on my Christmas card list. I'm sending him a Christmas card later in the year. There's no doubt about that. I like that. Sport, folks. Now, we're getting on sport, and then we're going to go on yesterday. So, we're coming to the end now. We're coming to the end. I'll go as quick as I can. I read Everton. A close. They've been sending this for two years. A close to sale. A close to a sale. Old Moshri could be on his way out. What's the company called? It's a, a US private investment firm called 777 Partners LLC. They're close to buying the club, so Moshri can finally leave and give the uh, fans there the respite they deserve. Whether it happens or not, folks, I don't know. I, for one, hope it does. Yeah, I'm a United fan, but I've got nothing against Everton, and I think them fans have been through much, much too much. And as many of you know... My son-in-law and grandson absolutely love the team. So for that reason, I do hope they get some decent owners in who know what they're doing. American owners, it makes me think of the Glazers, though. Don't get the Glazers in, whatever you do. Get anyone in. Don't get the Glazers in. Shane Lowry. He's been picked for the Ryder Cup, hasn't he? I think that starts in a couple of weeks, just when I get home. Watch that religiously. Love the Ryder Cup. One of my favourite sporting events of the whole year. Of the four years that it's been, I look forward to it all the time. It's a crackerjack. Many were uh, saying that Lowry shouldn't have been picked. His form this year has been horrendous. He's missed loads and loads of cuts. 
Uh, but his captain, Luke Donald, said, well, watch him go in the next two events. I think he'll do well. And to his credit, he came third in one at the weekend. But I would, I would say the field that he was in was a weakened field and not the best field in the world. Anyway, what Shane said over the weekend is, I'm upset that so many people have to go at me for being picked. But what did he say? Wait a minute. I know I will be good in Rome in two weeks' time. I thought, I've got a feeling the way you've been playing, Shane, you might get only a point, point and a half, or not that. I hope I'm wrong, and I hope you do really well, but they're not words I would be saying two weeks before that competition. Based on the form we've seen of you this year, well, I'm not as sure you'll be good as you are, but I would love you to prove me wrong. And lastly, I think lastly, it is lastly, yeah, before we talk about yesterday, I noticed uh, your man, Sean Wayne, uh, rugby league now, by the way, um, I think he's... Um, Preparing for a three-test series against Tonga. They're not a bad team, but they're by no means the best in the world. They've got a three-match series coming up next month. I read today that his assistant is Andy Last. I think he lost his job at Wakefield or somewhere like that recently, so he's not had a great season. He's brought over as well Lee Brays from uh, Australia, ex-Warrington player, so I loved him a lot, thought he was great. As an attack coach, great, doing a great job in Australia. Um, but he's brought him over he's bringing Sam Burgess over and also Sam Tompkins and I'm th thinking what's going on here is this jobs for the boys city surely they don't need five of you to coach the team five of you Sean you, you tell us you're good what do you need all these people for crazy I thought and, and let's face it it's only Tonga but then that made me think oh slamming old Sam Burgess is coming over well I heard his wife is ready to uh, have the nipper any time now and any day soon the tests are like four weeks away, but what's going to happen? Is he going to come without her? Is she going to come over here with him? I'm thinking if Warrington get through to the playoffs, he's going to be here then anyway. Is he then just going to go back? Or while he's here, is he going to help Warrington? Now what's he going to do? It's all quiet on the Western Front. I don't know, folks. But as I know, you will know. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the news. That's basically all I've seen. What did I get up to yesterday? Well, it was our anniversary yesterday. It's many years. I don't want to go through how many. I'm telling people jokingly it's 70. It's not 70. It feels like 70, but no, no, it's not. We had a cracker check of a day. We were out late. We are out real late. It was an half past two, which is it's a late one for us, but we enjoyed it, as I say. Um, we went to possibly our favourite restaurant in this area, the old Embassy. Not uh, Bernard Manning's Club in Arpe there, no. This is a bit more upmarket than that. The Embassy. We had a great time. Great meal, enjoyed it very, very much. And then we went to see, to see a comedian. It was only a few hundred yards away. We'd seen him advertise in the afternoon. He's been here for many a year, on, on and off, I believe. An ex-TV comedian. And I thought I wouldn't mind seeing him. It's 30-odd years since he was on the telly, but that could be good. They don't have many comedians over here. And I like a joke. I thought that'd be great. Anyway, he's supposed to be on at 10 o'clock. 20 past nine, they say, oh, yeah, well, comedian couldn't make it today. We've got a meatloaf tribute, and I thought, oh, no, not meatloaf. Not meatloaf, anything but meatloaf. Now, again, folks, I know many of you will like him. I think the thumbnail to this is going to be meatloaf, if only because it'll attract a good few people, because a lot do like him. This guy was a tribute. As tributes went, he wasn't too bad. He wasn't great, but he wasn't too bad. He sounded okay. He did seven or eight songs. He said, that's the great thing with meatloaf. He's only done it is seven or eight songs, but they're all seven to ten minute uh, classics, and it fills up me set. Anyway, it's the only tribute I've ever seen in my life that didn't get or didn't do an encore. Now, some of you may think, might be thinking it's because he was crap. No, 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 that's not the case. He'd done the seven or eight songs we know. There's nothing else left. That's all Meatloaf's done in a 40, 50 year career. About seven songs. Nobody knows anything else. So that was encoreless. Is there such a thing? I don't know. That is in my books, I've just said it. The guy was pretty good, as I say, but nothing brilliant. He was okay. But the reason I don't like Meatloaf, and I'll share this with you, I've seen many, many, many acts over the years, and I mean many, many of the greatest male, female singers, groups in the world, and from all genres. I was a bit of a rocker in my youth, still am. The 70s classic rock is my favourite era, because I'm a little oldie now, as I've told you before, but I like loads of stuff. I've even seen stuff like Old Neil, Neil Diamond, M People, the Everly Brothers. So, a massive range, massive stuff. Beyonce, I've seen her, lots, lots and lots and lots. But, I've seen Meatloaf, ooh, 
time flies so you forget it 30 40 years ago there's a really top bill on say five six top acts i think he's second on the bill it's in his a day 100 percent in his a day absolutely dire i have never seen a well-known world-renowned act be as bad as Mick Love was that day. He was absolutely shocking. And when I say shocking, I mean shocking. It was awful. And I've never forgotten it. And I like see acts that impress me and that I think, well, they can do here what they could do on record and vice versa. He couldn't do anything he was doing on records at the time. And, it, and his voice hadn't gone anything, but he just couldn't hit any notes. It was just, it was awful. It was absolutely awful. He went down all right, as in the crowd thought it was not too bad. He was dire absolutely dire and I've never forgotten that and for that reason I've never been a lover of ease but that's just me I know I'm in the minority I know many like meatloaf I don't yeah we met a couple of people about three days ago uh, a gent called John um, and his wife and I can't remember his wife's name because I'm crap my memory's crap I heard it in passing once or twice but I remember the name John and the main reason is he sung a few songs on the old Cara OK the old karaoke I think I only heard him sing three songs. He sung one about three days ago. Very, very good. I said to him the other half, he's brilliant, him, and I mean brilliant. He sung one last night by Lou Rawls. A few of you will know it. Did it brilliantly. The best male act I've seen in this area doesn't sing it as well as John did. I've heard one person back home sing it better, but this one person back home, if you close your eyes or looked away, you would think Lou Rawls was in the room. He sounds exactly like him. But this fella back home, has got only that in his armory and nothing else. This John can sing the phone book. He's brilliant. Sung his third song, the third one he had done, was really disappointed. He sung that, what's that Neil Diamond one that everybody does? Not Neil Diamond even. No, not Neil Diamond. Roy Orbison. I can't think what it's called, but it'll come to me whilst I'm talking. Um, maybe it won't, but it's the one that absolutely everybody does and it's not Pretty Woman. It's the party song and whatever. You know it anyway. If you don't, just look for it. It's, I don't know what it's called. The thing in the bagatelle and all this palaver. I don't know what it's called. The reason I wasn't keen was I thought, this guy's got a brilliant, brilliant voice. Why on earth would he sing a song that absolutely everybody sings, that's really easy to sing, and that's pros possibly Robertson's worst ever song? Had he sung in Dreams, I'd have been in Clover. But he sung this one, and I can't think what it's called. But as I say, you'll know it, viewers. Anyway, he said, no, no, he said, I love it. The reason I love it is, we've realised it's a, it's a up north song. I'm, or up down, is it down north, up north? Wherever it is, I live in the northwest. It's from our area. I can go out one night in Liverpool and I can hear that song ten times in various singing establishments. It, from either professional singers or semi-profesh or karaoke people. I just hear it all the time. He said, first time I heard it was three or four years ago. It's a song you never hear in London, and when I sing it, it goes down brilliantly, and it goes down brilliantly because no one's ever heard it. He said, and I'm singing it tonight, and I realised it wasn't going down as I expected. And he actually said to me, he said, I nearly sung a George Michael song, but I thought the clientele was a bit older in here. I didn't know how it would go down, and I thought, I'll, that's what I'll sing. And I said, why didn't you sing a George Michael song? I said, no one sings George Michael songs, and George Michael's brilliant. He said, well, I was going to sing, and then he told me the song viewers, and it's my favourite George Michael song. And it's a song that I've never heard anybody sing on the old karaoke. And it's called A Different Corner. I love it. I said, oh, yeah, I can't believe he was going to sing that. can't believe he was going to sing that. And did uh, this Roy Orbison one for it. I was gutted. But anyway, his name is John. He's from down there in Essex. Or up there in Essex. Up there, down there. I don't know where he's from. Down there. Down there in Essex. Up there. Scotland, isn't it? Down there in Essex. What a vocalist. What a singer. I've heard him sing three songs. And I reckon... Were he to come over to Tenerife and do an act on a daily basis, it'd be in the top three vocalists in this area straight away. I've heard one woman that's as good as him or better than him and, and one guy now. He was brilliant. And uh, anyway, met him over a couple of nights. Great, great fella. I mentioned I was going to um, give a mention to him on this, so he might well have watched this. I told him about the channel. He might have watched it. Um, anyway, I thought he was absolutely great. And his wife... Lovely, lovely young lady. Uh, and that is probably it, is that it? Meal at the embassy. Tick. Anniversary. Tick. Meatloaf. Tick. John. Tick. That's it, folks. Or as they would say in the old... What is it? The, was it the old Walt Disney stuff? It wasn't Walt Disney. And a bad bit. Oh, that's all, folks. I don't know where they said it, but you know what I mean, don't you? 
that's all folks anyway that's it from me see you tomorrow for day will it be seven i think it'll be day seven it will see you later bye bye